Hey, what's up guys? Back in the garage again. Thought I'd give another update on some projects that I'm working on. I've had this one probably, I don't know, over six months. I think I, I'm ready to get working on it again. I really haven't touched it in probably a couple months, so it's about time I made more progress on it. Even see the light at the end of the tunnel to get it wrapped up. I think this is one of the things that I've been looking forward to getting done. I think it'll make a huge improvement in both the aesthetics and hopefully the performance, but uh, definitely weight savings. And yeah, so here it is. Currently in progress, it is a Edelbrock ProFlow EFI intake manifold that was obviously one piece when I purchased it. Uh, I'll show some pictures of what it used to look like. It was for a Vortec V8, so a small block Chevy with the Vortec heads, so the intake manifold bolt holes were vertical as opposed to the conventional angled bolts but uh, that's just because of my heads or the later style Vortec V6 heads had you know these vertical mounting bolts so I just purchased this for a small block Chevy and you know marked it out and cut it up so I, I basically cut cut it down here's a couple of the pieces that were cut out so I cut out you know a significant portion of material uh, I didn't know exactly how I was going to cut it initially but I eventually got a plan together so the V8 to the V6 is missing the third cylinder from you know this side of the engine and then the sixth cylinder from the back so it's basically the same cylinder from each head so you can you can swap the head from either side for both the v8 and the v6 so this cylinder was essentially removed from the v8 so what i did was cut out at an angle so that i would remove this intake port and this intake port and then i'm going to weld it back together i cut out the the bore spacing so 4.4 inches of material has to be cut out to be able to close up the gap where that cylinder was because the bore spacing is 4.4 on a on a you know on a 4.3 v6 and both for the small block chevy so yeah so that's the idea that i had because they obviously don't make really any aftermarket intake manifolds for fuel injection they make some carbureted ones. There was some really early Holly intake manifold for the V6, but those are far and few between. And I don't actually know if they actually made those for the Vortec head. I think that was really for the conventional style bolt hole V6. They don't make them anymore, so you basically have to find them used. Uh, and really, I don't think it's worth the money when it was actually uh, used that someone had actually started the modifications to remove the two cylinders, the two ports for the V6, but they really only made like one or two small cuts and threw it up on eBay, so I got a good deal. The next steps that I have for this, I've pretty much ground down enough material to where it will bolt up. I might do a little bit of hand filing, but I've basically been using this spare engine that I got from the junkyard. I just taped up, you know, the valley and the intake ports so that I could, you know, set the intake manifold on here. And I'm spacing it up with just a handful of pieces of eighth inch aluminum because I measured, you know, a stock gasket and it measured out to roughly an eighth of an inch. Did another round of sanding and it's getting pretty close. Now I'm really to the point where 
I need to take my time to make sure that I get the tightest fit as possible so that when I go to weld, I'm not filling huge gaps because I don't want to have to do that because this material is extremely thick. Uh, in some locations, it's like probably like three eighths of an inch thick. But you can see that it's pretty close. I have some alignment bolts in the front and I don't know if I can shine a light. I have no idea if you can see that, but it's pretty close. I'm not using those to do the alignment. I'm actually using the injector ports uh, because this is set to the bore spacing of the engine. So this is 4.4 like center line to center line. So I'm just using calipers to measure that on both sides. So that's trick for anyone that's crazy enough to try this other than me. It's coming together pretty good. So when I originally cut the manifold up, I was using these standard metal cutting uh, abrasive wheels. And man, they did definitely did not like cutting aluminum, especially cutting through, you know, three eighths in some sections. I should have upgraded to an aluminum specific cutoff. And also for flap discs, I basically went through these cheapo Harbor Freight flap discs like really, really fast. I actually already used this aluminum flap disc on uh, just a little cleanup on the manifold. It works so much better than these standard, you know, steel kind of specific flap discs. And you can see like how thick even they are compared to the standard kind of, you know, steel flap discs. So I'm hoping that not only will they work better on aluminum, I'm hoping they'll last much longer as well. I would definitely recommend the flap discs. Probably have to upgrade to the, the aluminum specific cutoff wheels in the future. Here we go. Got two aluminum spacers made up. Hopefully the holes line up. I'm gonna pull the tape off of that and see how they fit. Well, that wasn't too bad. I just had to file this one a little bit. Now they'll act as nice uh, spacers to make sure that the intake manifold is, you know, parallel with both the head surfaces. Uh, and yeah, and there's a little bit, they're not perfectly flat, but you know, this aluminum is pretty soft, so it should suck it down nice and square. And then I'm also going to um, measure with like a a feeler gauge or like calipers in between, you know, the China rail and the bottom of the intake manifold to make sure that it's flat this way compared to the, the gasket surface right there and back there. Let's test the intake manifold with the spacers. Well, there we go. It looks like it's fitting pretty good. I might have to do just a minor amount of filing 
I'm trying to get the tightest gap that I possibly can uh, within reason between the two pieces of intake manifold. Uh, I went through and I don't even think I can fit a 332nd once I have these, you know, kissed up to one another in between any of that. So really no big gaps to fill. Uh, it is thick, so I V-grooved it pretty decent. I might actually uh, go a little bit more aggressive in a couple spots because uh, most of the spots, this is a quarter inch thick, but down here at the two flanges, it's probably near a half inch thick. So I'm going to groove that and I'll probably have to do multiple passes on those really thick sections. So yeah, hopefully you guys stick around. I'm so excited to see what this does, um, both with a stock engine and then once either that engine blows up or um, basically not able to go any quicker, I'm going to swap over to this engine. I've already put LS6 valve springs. They basically drop right in with some aftermarket comp cams, retainers, and keepers. That's a relatively inexpensive upgrade. And then I actually got a comp cams 270, I think, camshaft. I'll put the uh, a link to it uh, in the description for basically the, the valve springs and the retainers and keepers and the camshaft. But uh, that's not gonna go in anytime soon. I think I'm gonna try and push the uh, stock long block to see you know, how quick I can go. 